All right, dudes. Well, NSF has the coverage up. Uh, and I left my coffee on the freaking pot. Dang it. <laughs> All right. Check this out. Well, actually, maybe I should say hi first. Hi. How are you? How is everybody? Everybody good? Uh, Starling 4-1 got scrubbed due to weather conditions. It's now tomorrow. Which is going to be very hard to attend. I'm going to do it. It's going to be tough to attend because that's right in the middle of the little sleep that I get between Friday's and Saturday's stream. <laughs> that's going to suck. <laughs> but such is life. Did I take a look? Stop, go get the coffee. You had one job. Please, no Minecraft impact. No. No sleep for you. Hey, Dijor. What's up? All right, here. Let's uh, put that down there. Guys, I'm going to go grab my coffee. And our buddies over at NSF, like I said, as always, have given us uh, kind of rain to uh, restream uh, the footage over here on Twitch, so here you go. Not a stop on the production side. I'm gonna yeah, put them on. I'm gonna put their audio on for a second, but here, long story short, we... What the hell? So SN20 is on suborbital pad B right here. There's two pads uh, in the suborbital starship testing complex. There's A and B. A has the remains of a booster on it. The remains. That was the remains of Booster 3. That They did static fire that booster, and that was probably the last thing that they ever did on that pad. Uh, it's been kind of sitting there doing nothing. But Pad B has Starship SN20 on it. This is the star, Starship from the first orbital, that should be for the first orbital flight test. Now, the recondenser is on, meaning they're moving fuel around. Whenever the recondenser is on, this thing right here, that see those, those condensate, plumes of condensation? Whenever the recondenser is on, that means they're scavenging evaporated methane, which means they're moving methane, which means somewhere along the line, they heated up the fuel tanks here, and liquid the liquid went through, is going through pipes somewhere. They're moving fuel. That's, that's, that's a telltale sign of it. Now, that's on the right box. On the left box over here, you have a booster proto, well, a booster test article and then the dingle bop. Remember that remember that thing? The this that's the dynamic load test stand. And then you have a test tank behind it that are moving to the pad. So Huh. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, I like night testing. I'm going to go too. I'm gonna go Especially grab the coffee and the water. I'll be right back. Right. Right. That's very yeah. strange. They wouldn't. They With usually the don't do lights, that. With all the lights, you can see venting way better when it's night. Oh, <laughs> so, that's fair. Yeah. I like night testing. Sorry. No, you're good. I understand. Uh. We've got a bunch of super chats rolling in. I'm going to uh, roll through these real quick. Gene Arnold with a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, Stucco Dude with a $5 super chat as well. Thank you. Uh, from Austin DeSisto, sending love and to. Excuse me. Sending some love to the incredible work. Keeping it up, Nick and Mary, and all those on stream. Can't wait to make it back down there. Yeah, that booster prototype has the Starship aft dome, which is strange. Uh, from Chris K, $5 Super Chat. So I just purchased my Starship plushie just now. However, I'm still wanting to know how right. I get an ugly Christmas <sighs> sweatshirt from the NSF shop. Everybody get a good sleep? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that we have uh, plans for that immediately, but that sounds like a pretty good idea. That's the decimated remains of a booster. All right. Now that I have my coffee... I'm ready to watch tanks. What? What's all that churning and bubbling? You call that a starship? No, sir. We call it Mr. Coffee. Care for some? Yes. I always have my coffee when I watch starship. You know that. 
Everybody knows that. <clears throat> Switch to Teleview. T-Rex arms on Mechzilla. Also, has there been any full movement testing on the arms? Full speed up and down. Uh, not as yet. We were just talking about that. Uh, <coughs> yeah, me too, Tars. Sorry. Um, oh, good, we can see. Dude, it's been... So you know, you know, remember the other day when I was like, "Oh, I'm just, I'm gonna have to set multiple alarms now, just in case my phone tries to update or something with alarms or whatever." Right? I missed the Lucy launch because my phone decided to. Dang it! I don't have my phone. My phone decided to update, right? So I started setting the alarm clocks. Phone tried to update today. Phone tried to update today again. Luckily, it didn't because I forgot to plug it in, which is good. So my alarms did go off, but the alarm clocks, we lost power last night. Power turned on and turned off. So all the clocks, all the clocks reset. I'm like, oh, that's, that's good. So yeah, I woke up about 15 minutes before SpaceX was supposed to launch this morning. And then it scrubbed. Such is life, man. <clears throat> um, based yep. on what we see at the moment. Yep, yep, yep. Did I take a look or not? Take a look at what, Gold? What are you talking about? I don't understand. What am I looking at? Take a look at these nuts, boy. Oh, man, you got me here. How, why don't you take a look at this timeout instead, bish? Right back at you, mother trucker. <laughs> Get an old analog alarm clock, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> take a look at this timeout. <laughs> uh, the takes are rolling onto the road, which has they're rolling onto the road, which has the Appleton Crane Shed. Huh. Okay. Of us that have got watching, preparing for the uh, Starship. So it's interesting, is that this is the first time we're seeing this thing move here? That's the Dingle Bop. That's what we called it. Uh, so it, we think it's a, it's a Starship dynamic test stand. There's a bunch of hydraulic jacks right here, and they have hooks on the end of them. So my guess is that there's probably some kind of, uh, load cell, I think it would be, up here. And they extend the hydraulic jacks, and they, they, um, hook them up rig them up to the to the load cell up the top and then they compress the hydraulic jacks the hydraulic jacks pull down and they it's it's basically a big hydraulic press it's missing the top part though i call it the dingle bop because we couldn't figure out what the frick that thing was when they started putting it together i'm like yeah i have no clue <laughs> hey elro <clears throat> i assume you saw the hyundai grandeur concept car That yo, that's cool. It's a it's a it's a classic Hyundai. What I never those are words I never thought I'd say. Oh, I think that's cool. Yeah, retro Hyundai re releasing a retro version of one of their one of their classic like old school cars, like the classic '80s sedan. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Ford should do that with the Fairmont. How awesome would it be if they did? <clears throat> I 
the Fairmont was Ford's like stupid 80s sedan, right? Like that's that was the economy car. Ford should just make an electric Fairmont. They made it in a two-door version too because it's based off of the Mustang chassis. It's a Fox body. And like, see the wagons and stuff? That would be cool. Does it have 80s reliability too? Uh, yeah, vacuum lines. Vacuum lines everywhere. <laughs> the Granada. I remember Snickers once upon a time. This was a long time ago. When I first bought the 59, uh... I over torqued some uh, an alternator bracket and because it, it was pot metal it broke and I got all pissed off at it so I went I went down to a junkyard it's actually the same junkyard that I got parts for tough enough from but it used to that junkyard used to be a classic car junkyard used to be once upon a time and uh, yeah we pulled well we pulled all kind I pulled all kinds of stuff off of a Ford Granada for to fix the 302 because it, it was a 79. And it had the same, and my truck has, this, the 59 has a 79 it, engine in it. So I pulled all kinds of accessory pulleys off of it and stuff. They're still on the truck. <laughs> hey, Swishio. <clears throat> What's this NASA tweet? Tomorrow's the grand opening of the NASA Experience, our new visitor center at the Chevo Space Center in Oakland. Here's a sneak peek. Oh. Hello. Hello. Cool. body rod after two years on the road. Jim, they really were pieces of junk, man. They skimped out on those cars in the 80s, didn't they? Those things, like K cars and stuff, those things were... I mean... That's when cars really started to become an appliance, huh? Hey, Knight, what's going on? Hey, Sanchai, what's going on? Need to see that in space soon. Just exactly that, TJ. Soon, man. I, it still blows my mind, dude. It's, Dude, this seems like a fever dream or something. That is... I mean, that's a prototype. It's a... <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. Here, here I go. Here I go, TJ. <laughs> Get ready for it. That's a prototype space shuttle. It's a it's a Mark II space shuttle. It's what this is what NASA wanted to make with the space shuttle. Basically, something like this. Well, not exactly. It, what NASA wanted to make was more in line with Dream Chaser, believe it or not. Um, yeah, that that's what they wanted to do. NASA wanted to make a basically a reusable pod first. So like a lifting body pod. That's what they were trying to do. It just kind of morphed into the space shuttle when the Department of Defense got in on the project and said, we need to launch uh, something that's 15 by 45 feet into space. And NASA said, what do you mean? Well, what are you launching that big? And the Air Force said, things. And NASA said, what, what do you mean things? And the Air Force said, don't worry about it. It's fine. NASA's like, I just don't understand why you're launching something that big into space. And the Air Force said, because we like to party, okay? Don't worry about it. <clears throat> We're launching School Bus. You ever see that show, The Magic School Bus? No, not it. We're not. We're not launching a school bus. We're launching School Bus. They. We're doing School Bus in space. Okay. It's for the. It's for the children. No, I mean, Starship basically is all the benefits of a Saturn V and all the benefits of a space shuttle at the same time. It is, I mean, this thing, the fact that it even exists. I, I mean, I said this, <clears throat> I used to say this back in 2013. You know, people would ask me, you know, and this was coming off the, coming off the space shuttle program, right? Man, I've been streaming for a long time. Uh... People just ask, is anybody ever going to try a reusable shuttle ever again? Are we ever going to see another one? It's a question I still get asked. Not as often, not as often as 10 years ago, but <clears throat> well, eight years ago, if we want to be technical, uh, if, are we ever, is, are we ever going to see another space shuttle? Are we ever going to see another space shuttle? Are we ever going to see another space shuttle? I, I used to get asked that all the time when I was launching Collins, 
when I was launching my space shuttle in game. And what I I would always say, nah, probably not. But that I remember at the end of this, at the start of this kind of little spiel here, I used to say that because there's one. Elon put a car in space. Don't challenge him for a bus. Yeah, right. Ooh, Opal Cadet. That would be a cool little electric vehicle, Master. Not gonna lie. Please let this be a normal field trip. It's never normal. <clears throat> Master, this was your car. You had a Cadet in the 80s? That's a cool car, man. Imagine a Firebird with the Mach-E motor. Yeah. This is the Mark III space shuttle, not Mark II. That was Varan. Yeah, I guess. If you want to look at it like that. Cadets are cool. There's something to say about a tiny front-engine rear-wheel drive car, Master. I mean, the that's that's a British thing, believe it or not. Little tiny tiny sport coupes. That was a British thing for the longest time. And then, and then BL happened, and then it wasn't a British thing. And the Japanese made a better British roadster than the British did. That's and then that's the way it's been since <laughs> the Miata. What's a coupe? Uh, C O U P E. I don't know. I forget what you guys call that. It, coupe. Yeah. It's French. It's pronounced coupe. Yeah. Are you guys the kind of people that see a target and they go, oh yes, it's pronounced Target. No. Did I miss the static fire? Nope. <clears throat> I don't know why NSF is saying engine chill. We don't, I don't see any vents going on here. Oh, wait, nope, never mind. Oh, yeah. Okay, so check this out. We don't see the tri-vents. Well, not the tri-vent. This thing doesn't have a tri-vent anymore. I don't, at least I don't think. See the, see the little bits of condensation that are coming out of the bottom here? That's, that's indicative of them putting, putting cold propellants into the plumbing on the Raptor engines that are down there. See the, see this all down here? It's very, it's tough to see with the atmospheric conditions today. You can tell that Starship looks like it's wiggling, right? Um, <clears throat> do we know how many engines are being fired? Uh, no, Tess, I don't. Uh, Fragile, yep. We say coffee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, this right here means that SpaceX is pumping fuel into Starship. They w there wouldn't be condensation down here if they weren't pumping fuel. Pumping fuel. Pumping. If they weren't pumping fuel through the through the umbilical right here. See this. See this guy. Into that thing. Um, So what, what that basically means is that the plumbing at the bottom of Starship has fuel flowing into it, which means that they're filling up the fuel tanks. I'm surprised, you, Drummer, you know what coffee is, you know, with, all, with that whole tea thing, with the, you know, the whole tea lot. I know coffee's not popular with you lot. I know, you're not breaking into song up in here. How much are we betting more tiles pop off? Hey, Rivian. What's up, dude? Um, I don't know. It's possible. I tell you what, they probably wouldn't be static firing this thing again if they weren't concerned about it. <clears throat> what, I've, what I've been saying is that this thing... SN20, the whole reason for SN20's existence is to test the tiles. That's the whole reason. Uh, when you're building a reusable spacecraft, and now keep in mind, there's not that much to, there's not that much data to kind of go off of, but the, from the data that we do have, right? <clears throat> when you're building any type of reusable spacecraft, it could be the space shuttle, it could be Dragon, it could be Orion, it could be Starliner, 
it could be Buran, it could be Dream Chaser, it doesn't matter. Every single one of them <clears throat> starts with landing first. You'd think that they would build the whole rocket and fly the thing, right? You'd think. I mean, but actually not. The first thing, the first thing that SpaceX was really testing is hopping, right? So going up and coming right back down, right? With SN5, that was seems like it was ages ago. Uh, they launched SN5 and SN6 off of Pad A, right? And those things just hopped. That thing was just there to to make sure that Raptor could hop around with a stainless steel tank. Sorry, I got something in my eye. And then what did they do after that? They started putting the flappy wings and the nose cone on there. And then they tested the flip maneuver, right? The thing that's on my mission control screen. They tested this, right? And they did that a couple of times until they nailed one. Until SN15 stuck the landing, right? So now you got, you got landing, you got the flip maneuver, right? So what's the next thing? So that's descent and landing. The next thing to test is entry. So tiles. Tiles, getting the thermal protection systems figured out for the shuttle. Uh, uh, shuttle. See? Nice. Uh, for, for Starship, are, that is priority one right now. You, you could just tell from how SpaceX is testing. All of these tests are there to, make, to, to try and figure out ways to not have the tiles screw up. That's it. That's the tweet. <clears throat> how will launch abort work? Wookie, they're trying to operate it like an airplane, so the abort contingencies are much sim more, much more similar to an airplane. Now, whether or not you think that's a good idea, uh, I'm pretty sure Elon doesn't care. Uh, uh, no, the the idea with Starship is to be able to fly it a lot. They're trying to implement mass amounts of auto automation and simplicity into the loops here for for this to make it as simple to fly and use as an airplane. So, no abort system. The shuttle did also lose tiles. Eh, yeah, but not for, the, not for the reasons that you think, Master. Tell me you didn't wake up for the butt crack of dawn for a scrub this morning. Oh, I'd tell you that, Fanta, but I'd be lying. RT, bonjour. <clears throat> you see Tomah made it home? Keep part count low for better reliability. Damn straight, Maverick. They're trying, yes, yeah, they're, they're trying to make this thing as simple as a jet airplane to fly, which is, I mean, don't get me wrong, that's still complicated. All right, you need. There's a lot of. There's a lot. Like, there's a lot of effort that goes into getting like a 730, getting a 737 flying and keeping it flying. So, <clears throat> this is not going to be. Uh, 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 inexpensive endeavor here, right? But it will be, I mean, if they can lob a hundred tons around all over the place, then man, this is going to be neat. Why did the shuttle lose tiles? <clears throat> There's a couple of different reasons. Um, the shuttle, so there are a couple instances throughout the space shuttle program where it had problems with the tiles, okay? The first instance came before the shuttle even started flying. So, Columbia, <clears throat> this is gonna be a long one, so let me. Columbia was built and it was, it, it, they started building it in 1976. Uh, it was the second orbiter off the line after Enterprise. Enterprise was the first shuttle ever constructed. And, you know, you could say the Enterprise isn't a real shuttle because it flew, it didn't fly into space. And that would be fair criticism, right? Oh, a lot of propellants being, being flowed in here. Um, <clears throat> Columbia was the second one. They built Columbia, right? And they put all the tiles on and then they flew it on the shuttle carrier across the U.S. to Florida. <clears throat> They put the shuttle in the hangar. They 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 flew. They brought it into the OPF and they left it there. And they went home. They came back the next day and all the all the tiles were on the floor. It's because the tiles, being silicate based, they absorb water. 
they absorb water a lot. They absorb a lot of moisture from the atmosphere. And unfortunately, the glue that they glued the, the tiles to the shuttle with uh, is, was water soluble. So basically the shuttle, when, it, when they flew it to Florida, it absorbed all the humidity in the atmosphere and all the tiles were carrying moisture, right? And that basically it was soluble to the, gr to the glue. It, it just basically washed the glue off and all the tiles popped off. The shuttle program got delayed by two years because of this. Seriously. <clears throat> That's a problem they didn't anticipate, which is, I mean, why, why, how could you? How could you anticipate that? There's no way you could see that coming. There, that, that's like, that's what I mean about teething problems. Uh, they, every spacecraft has stupid problems like that, that you're going to run into. So they had to do a process called densification. And since the shuttle was already in Florida, <clears throat> they basically had to bring guys over from California just like guys like from Hawthorne, right? The guys that work for SpaceX that were in California are in Texas now. Same same thing, but different circumstances, right? Uh, and they had to basically take all the tiles off of Columbia and put it back on. They had to put them right back on. But they had to put them on with a less water-soluble glue. And they actually, guys went down to the hardware store, right? And started painting the, the aluminum skin of the shuttle with Thompson's, with deck sealer, with Thompson's water seal believe it or not. I have that on first hand from a guy that worked on the thermal protection systems. It was a docent that I talked to at the Atlantis exhibit in, in, in Kennedy. He's like, we went down, we went down to freaking Lowe's and we got, we got water sealer and we, we tested that on, on like with adherence. And we, you know, we put a tile on a sheet of aluminum outside, <clears throat> upside down. We just left it there. It worked. So they started painting the shuttle with deck sealer. No joke. That is, I, that is, I have that on first hand, which is pretty funny. Uh, but hey, if it's, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Um, morning, Flaken. How many redundant engines does Starship have for landing? Well, there's three landing engines, Wookie. So <clears throat> that was the first problems that they had with the tiles. The second problem that they had, the densification worked. That It worked just fine. The tiles stayed on. They figured that out at the end of SDS-1. But at the beginning of SDS-1, well, that was the second problem they had with the tiles, okay? What happened was, is that the SRBs overperformed. They, for whatever reason, performed way too well. They, they, they were a little more powerful than anticipated, not by much, but just a little bit more powerful. So the water, the sound suppression system, on the on the launch pad was not good enough to be able to quench the sound right it couldn't that's what the, that's why they spray the pad with water it's not to keep i mean it is to keep the pad cool to an extent right if you you can film cool with the water basically rocket exhaust hits the water before it hits the pad and it turns the water to steam instead of melting the pad right but that's the difference between a pad deluge system and a sound suppressor pad deluge is what keeps the pad cool sound suppressor is what you spray kind of over the pad when the rocket takes off. The reason is because the sound from the rocket engines reverberates off the ground when a rocket is leaving leaving the, the pad, right? And because the SRB is overperformed, the sound suppressor wasn't sufficient enough. And the sound was so ridiculously violent, it shook tiles off of the space shuttle. There, there was a couple on the Ohms pods here and there, but that's about it. Um, Fortunately, it was nothing in a uh, real Achilles heel spot. It was nothing in a particularly bad spot. They were all on the leeward side of the space shuttle, the ones that fell off. Uh, so they figured that one out by, by tweaking the SRBs and the sound suppressor a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but, the, I mean, the shuttle program, basically through, throughout the rest of the program, uh, like there, there, there are cited specific things here and there, like with that happens with tiles, but none of them were, none of them was because of the tiles, but that ceiling problem, they had that every time. That's why if you look at a picture of the space shuttle, right? If you look at a picture of one here, let's go rocket research, shuttle research pictures. Uh, let me 
me find a picture of the thermal protection system. Here we go. Uh, yeah, of course I want to open it with photos. It's a photo. That's why if you look at some of these tiles, you, see, you can obviously see tiles that were replaced, right? But <clears throat> these tiles were replaced because they needed to be re-adhered. You, but you can see that the vast majority of these tiles have been on the shuttle for a good amount of time. There is a way to tell. You can tell which tiles have flown previously on a space shuttle mission. Or, well, you can tell which tiles have flown on two missions. <clears throat> um, or, or have been into space more than once. Um, if you look at this picture... Oh, that's Enterprise. No, we don't want that. Not yet, at least. Uh, here's a picture of Endeavor. If you look at a... <clears throat> if you look at Endeavor, it kind of kind of looks fake, doesn't it? Look at how clean it is. Uh, see all these tiles? They're all, they all have the the letter the numbers on them, and everything looks good there, right? Um, and then if you look at like a, a newer picture, it's hard to tell from that. Let me see if we can. Here we go. Perfect. You look at this picture of Discovery here. If you look close, <clears throat> trying to see if we can find a find them. Nah, they're hard to spot. They're hard to spot in these pictures. Like you could tell some tiles are different colors, but some of the tiles will have a dot right in the center. The dot right in the center is a, a way that you can tell that a shuttle tile has flown at least twice, because the dot is where they re-injected the adhesive. They they figured out that you can punch a hole right through the center of the tile, and use that to inject glue more adhesive, but back behind the tile without taking it off. Um. <clears throat> There we go. There's one right there. See the dot? If I just save this. What's this? Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, see the dots right there? There they are. That's the glue reinjection. <clears throat> Meaning the tile has flown at least twice. So that was the kind of that was the kind of way that they figured the that they <clears throat> kind of the way that they figured out you don't need to replace the tiles the tiles there's nothing wrong with them they absorb moisture but they also it also goes away it's the glue the other thing that they had the other problem that they had is because the space shuttle is made out of aluminum right because it's made out of aluminum right uh you aluminum has different thermal expansion rates than the adhesive so when the shuttle heated up during re-entry it could crack crack the glue it could basically pop a tile off, right? Uh, that really, it really kind of cracked the glue, and then the shuttle went through re-entry, like it came out of re-entry and went into the humid atmosphere, and the cracked glue would absorb moisture, and then it would pop off. But <clears throat> yeah, the shuttle wasn't like shedding tiles during re-entry. That 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 didn't really happen too much. Uh, the tiles work great when they're when plasma is near them because. They work as as advertised, right? It's just the other places, right? Did you say shuttle? Here I am. What's up, White? So they had problems with adhesion with those tiles. Uh, they they never really like popped off during re-entry. Uh, I mean, there it was the reinforced carbon carbon that proved to be an Achilles heel. Well, not proved. It was an Achilles heel from for re-entry, but I don't want to talk about that. Uh, so, the shuttle ha had its teething problems with the tiles, but they got the tiles working pretty dang well by the end of the shuttle program. They even came up with better versions of them. They came up with, like, Mark II shuttle tiles. They're, they're Instead of a silicate-based tile, it's a unifibrous carbon. So, it's, it's called T-U-R-F-O-C. Tough Rock, for short. Uh, tough and unifibrous reinforced oxidation-resistant... Uh, corrosion resistant <clears throat> uh, or, so and those tough rock tiles are what flies on the X-37 and the X-37 is made out of aluminum and it has no problems it never pops tiles off ever um, and believe it or not Starship is using the same thing Starship is using a variant of tough rock here and they're using a mechanical adhesive their tiles pop on like a, uh, with a with like a little latch on the back of the tile, they, they 
to pop it on. Any idea why mechanical attachment wasn't used? Aluminum expansion and contraction rates, Wookie. They couldn't do it. They had to use they had to use something because the shuttle is made out of aluminum. It expands and contracts during re-entry. If you used a mechanical thing, it would expand and it would pop the tile off with a mechanical adhesive or mechanical adhesion. Excuse me. Um, so that's why they didn't do it. That's why they used glue instead. Now, Starship made out of stainless steel. <clears throat> these ones are mechanical. I guess. I guess you can use mechanical a mechanical attachment mechanism, so like a latch, right, that you pop the tile into. I guess you can use that with stainless steel because of different thermal expa thermal expansion and contraction rates. But that's just, yeah, that's just a guess. I mean, it is pronounced alu aluminum. <clears throat> Tech, what's going on? And thank you for the nice vets they send off the end of stream. It was awesome. I got you, man. <clears throat> I do what I can. <clears throat> Aluminum. Yep, that's what we call it, White. It's not aluminium. It's not aluminum. It's aluminum. Because screw both of the ways that you say it. I don't care how it's said. I, I don't. I don't care. I don't want to know. I don't want to know how it was designed to be said. I want to know how it can be said. What? <clears throat> Won't steel expand and contract as well? Yeah, but stainless steel with the right alloy might not. Who knows? I mean, <clears throat> clearly they've had, clearly the tiles have popped off. You can see that there's spots where there's no tile, where there should be tile. Uh, so that's why I think SpaceX is doing all these static fire tests. I mean, it's getting good data on how their fueling systems work, but I, once again, the entirety of SN20's existence is there to test those tiles. That is a big one. They have to solve those problems or else Starship doesn't hit that $2 million price point. I mean, and that doesn't <clears throat> that doesn't really matter if uh, it doesn't really matter if Starship has a $2 million price point or a $200 million price point or a $2 billion price point per launch. If the tiles fall off, then it's pretty damn useless. Jada, when is this, when is this uh, flight supposed to happen? It's pending FAA approval. You sound like my brother today. Hope you're feeling good. <clears throat> I've been fighting with laryngitis. White. I went to a Red Sox game and started screaming at the Red Sox, mostly out of anger. Well, actually, it wasn't at the Red Sox out of anger. It was the damn umpire. Yeah, and I lost my voice after that. And unfortunately, I have a job where you need to talk a lot. So it's because I talk for like 10 hours a day. Yeah, it's not, <clears throat> I'm having trouble kicking it. Ah, crappy baseball team sickness. Got it. I'm sure it's more complicated, but this tile adhesion problem feels super overcomable to me as a layman. Yeah, Wookie, you're, you're presuming things, which is a really stupid thing to do in aerospace engineering. I'm not saying you're stupid. Like, <clears throat> here's the thing. If it seems like an easy problem to fix and it took them 30 years to figure it out and get it working correctly on the shuttle, it's probably not as simple as that. Everything, everything in aerospace engineering is not nearly as simple as you think it is. It's easy to explain, and I communicate it pretty well in layman's terms, right? But this stuff, this stuff gets complicated, man. <clears throat> If they're having that much problem, if they're if the shuttle program had this many problems getting those stupid tiles adhered at the beginning of the program, you know that SpaceX is going to face those same endeavors. <laughs> Can you kick it like the kids do? Yep. <clears throat> I can't not stream for a week, Coolin. There's no paid time off here. I don't get sick leave at this when, with this job. Remember? <clears throat> 
Do you think SpaceX would develop a rotating service structure to load and unload Starship's payload bay? No. <clears throat> or they were never given the money to figure it out. <sighs> we don't talk about that, White. White, I had one of the most epic rants the other day about how the shuttle program was underfunded basically through the entire program. So, you know, Wookie, it, 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 you might be right, <laughs> but generally the concepts are, the stuff in the with aerospace is a lot more difficult than you think it is. Uh, of course, White. It's nothing that anybody here doesn't think, dude. <laughs> I got these old boys in here uh, understanding that real good. Blue just feels like such a half-tailed solution. I'm sure there's a reason, but it sounds absurd. <clears throat> uh, Wookie, you really want my honest opinion? The whole thing reeks of insufficient testing. Think about it. It's what White said. It, the whole thing reeks of insufficient testing. The entire shuttle program is full of that. It reeks of it. Like, it, you know what I always say? You shouldn't have surprises during operational missions. You should not have that. Surprises during operational missions go hand in hand with shuttle missions. That thing was really complicated. It was a really hard piece of equipment to get working correctly. All right? That reeks of insufficient testing, and that's exactly that's exactly what happened. How many test flights the shuttle did they do? <clears throat> if there's guys that are going out <coughs> after the shuttles were delivered during shuttle operational missions that are figuring out ways to get the tiles to to adhere correctly with freaking Thompson's water seal. I mean, how did you miss doing a humidity test? How is that even possible? The whole thing reeks of testing. The, their, the shuttle program was nothing but surprises during the entire program. My project reeks of propane and propane accessories, boy, I tell you what. Uh, I mean... You know, Wookie, I'll bet you that SpaceX solves this problem. I mean, they already they already opted for a completely different... I mean, this is stainless steel with mechanical adhesion. The shuttle was, you know, aircraft-grade aluminum with uh, glue adhesion, right? Uh, the, that, that is, like, light years away. Light years away, like, from, from the shuttle, like... <clears throat> Looks like they're putting more liquid oxygen in than usual. Phil, they're going to have to fully tank this thing and then fire it to see what happens. They better. NASA needs to hand all them lessons learned over. Oh, White, I have it on... Not pretty good authority, but... I'm pretty dang sure that SpaceX... When it, came, when it came to tile adhesion and stuff, went and raided NASA's technical resources. I'm pretty dang sure. They do that a lot. And th as they should. That's what technical resources is there for. Do, they, do we have an approximate ETAs for the static fire? <laughs> Cam, that's not how this works, Cammy. Oh. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is the thermal chill down of the engines. They're basically priming the Raptors. That's what these things are right here. You don't want to you don't want to have thermal shock loading of the Raptors. Basically, have them warm and then pump cold propellants into them real quick when you try to turn them on. Uh, you can get evaporated propellants going into the rocket engine, and that's not that's not a good thing. You don't want that. Also, you don't want to flash freeze the rocket motor. Uh, also bad for it. You could hard start it, uh, so you get what happened to SN11 which it would be a very, very, very bad thing. Uh, we never really saw what happened to that thing. but So this means that they're priming up the Raptors, getting them ready to fly. 
or well, not fly, but it's static fire. This is a static fire. So absolutely. Uh, Rolling in. I'm gonna see what we to got. Some of these super chats just as quickly as we can while we have. If you have to guess, how far do you think SN20 will go? If it gets off the pad, this is paraphrasing Elon, I guess. But if it gets off the pad, I'll be very impressed. Little type of vehicle still in it. Absolutely is. Um, and you know, even if it does fail in any kind of way, that's still information that they get to. Hey, secret man. Um, Bring back Guess who's back? Back again. Uh, John Petty with a 99 cent super chat. Thank you very much, John. What's going John on, dude? Phil Moore with a $20 super chat. More funds for the Hawaii boat rental. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Second King with a $5 Australian super chat. Uh, Urban Space. Uh, 20 is going to fly, dude. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll fly 21. Who knows? From the vacuum raptors. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is that we don't actually know. It's possible, um, for it's sure. Possible. That's, that's, that seems yeah. like a plausible way to incrementally expand their envelope here. Um, it, it's, but again, like you said, we, we just don't know exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, well, I don't remember they that. Do it. it was a good time. We should do that again. How do they test the tiles? Stick uh, them in front of an well, engine test? GC arc jet. Army. They said, used an arc jet, if I'm remembering correctly. Streams. Arc jet uh, and a lot of wind tunnel uh, testing. Are we going up like the space? <laughs> What's the <that? laughs> Yeah, secret man. When are you going to space, Jack? As soon as I can. You want to send me to space? I'll go. I'm dead serious. Oh, I'm I would go. Anything. I would absolutely go on the first chip to Mars. Hundred yeah. percent. Sign me up. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good H point. H Maybe five dollars super chat. Couldn't they send a refueler slash tanker to orbit Mars prior to sending an astronaut? I mean, plausibly, I don't know much about that sort of mission profile with how they would be uh, planning everything. I don't even know if they know yet. That that's a tricky one, because uh, sending a sending a tanker, I mean, it's going. Sending a tanker to low Martian orbit would not be a good idea, unless you have some type of propellant production on Mars. It makes much more sense to keep the tankers in low Earth orbit, right, and then send the starships out there, and then have them utilize ISOU on the surface. If we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about that, because you remember. If you're sending a tanker all the way to Mars, why not just send a starship with payload in it? Unload the payload, and then utilize Delta V to your advantage there by getting rid of all your dry mass because you offloaded the payload on the surface of Mars. Simultaneously, if you're going to put a gas station anywhere, it's going to be on the surface of Mars. It doesn't make any sense for a starship to circularize in low Martian orbit, refuel for landing, and then come back down when you can use Mars' atmosphere to slow you down. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So, I don't think a tanker ship would go around Mars. However, maybe sometime in the future. Sometime in the future, if, you know, we want, like, a space station around Mars, a depot might not be the worst idea. It's possible, Did Hellfish. Did say shuttle? I mean, I, just, I don't think I heard a cough. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Citizen Blue with a $5 super chat. Instead what? of a podcast, how about a webinar? Um, no. Okay. Okay, we're past no the siren. No webinars ever, unless it's an oven baking webinar. That's uh, an oven baking one. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> if you keep it pressurized <laughs> with me methane, yes, Havoc. Right. If you keep it pressurized, yes. Test now eminent on our little tracker there. Is that the depart? Like the the. the Discovery. The no one Hello. That looks Say weird. Say again. The the. The drive and looks like it's pulsing. That m yeah, we saw that. We okay. saw that on the previous test, right? They were it kind of pulsed the entire time, right? Yeah, the yeah. drive and really changed, but we should be just just be ready. Yeah, that imminent it could fire element any should, second. Should be happening pretty soon. No, and you can look and you can look at that ring now. It is now uh, enveloped in well above that. Um, the the hatch. black dot, the hatch. Yeah. 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 Interesting that there's not a lot of frost or any frost that's super kind visible on the, on the methane have. tank side. Mm -hmm. I agree. I talked to the guy that took this picture. So just because sometimes it's fun to put that time out, and most of the time it's very wrong, but the, the time the spreadsheet puts out is 11.14.20. But <coughs> that might be very off. Yeah, now are you? Right. 
I'm just <laughs> I don't want to say anything because I don't know if it's going to start going for me I do master yep All right yeah that's where I got mine in 73 press space all kinds of super chats coming in we'll get to those a little later guys Just waiting for some engine testing. Mm -hmm. Not sure, Stormy. Hey, Greg, thanks for the raid, man. How do the stars look? All right. It was very hard to hear, but we could hear a siren right now. So a siren has happened, which means the, the residents and everyone uh, close were warned that there might be a test apart. imminent, it's not which smoke. is a great sign. Yeah, is that is it ten minutes? Is that the uh... ish? It, yeah, it's it's yeah. a heavy emphasis on the ish, but yeah, ten minutes give or take could or be zombies. less. Sirens could, could also mean zombies. That, that's a fair point. It could that's be a coming good sign, out of the smoke. We're very close. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. So at, at this time, we're gonna just focus on one evil uh, day. The star was bright. Happening right? here. We'll get to some of these super chats. That's fine. Uh, Go back to the golf course and work on your putts. Or their added support in just a minute. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, you won't be the timing. Able to yeah, hopefully we see this most candle light for a second. Of all the clouds. So we don't yet know if it's going to be pre-burner testing, which it'll just be kind of a little whoop, uh, or if it'll be engine testing, which will be uh, a much bigger plume. A deeper, more Maybe violent similar. foop. I just threw a little hashtag little whoop into chat just because <laughs> it, it does nothing. It means nothing, but hey, I liked it. Yeah. So, so a little whoop. I mean, that's what we're listening to the uh, NSF coverage here. We do have permission to restream this stuff from from them uh, uh, over here on Twitch. So make sure you go over and support NASA Space Flight if you can. Uh, DK is on the stream here, uh, commentating on their end with Jack Byer, and I, I always forget the gentleman's name from overseas. And I'm a piece of crap for doing that. Sorry. Uh, but. Uh, Come alive there. It's got see we the got. venting, pulsing, the tri vent, Adrian, now bi vent, yeah, I you. guess. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think at this point we just call it the engine chill vent, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> just called my contacts over at SpaceX. Right? They confirmed, not zombies. Chat has latched on to the foop. The foop? I like it. Fooped what about people. ninjas? Oh my gosh. <laughs> they have pad. They have pad ninjas. Pad ninjas. Okay, one thing, pain. one time. Foop.exe. <laughs> Hashtag win foop. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, I like that one. So yeah, moments away from potentially the first ever science, DJ. Yeah. test of all six engines on a starship. Notice I don't say static fire. I say test because we're not sure quite what they're going to do. Maybe they'll do three. Maybe they'll actually fire three. Maybe it'll be some sort of, like we've been talking about, maybe a pre-burner test yeah, they don't uh, just said, but you of just a subset said of them. Maybe six. a pre-burner test of all of them. But yeah, like you said, they, they, don't, they don't tell us what they're doing. So it's we're really just going on experience and intuition here um, and logic. So we'll just now, have to wait and see what now exactly 24, they do. 24,000 people watching, waiting for the poop. When poop? When poop? Is it going to be a little poop? Or a big poop. <laughs> <laughs> there is foop involved. Oh boy. <laughs> There'll be a non zero amount of foop. <laughs> the anticipation. Yeah, 20, 24,000 this... people watching. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, really absolutely. Cool. My goodness. The anticipation of uh, just waiting for this to, to do it kills me every time. Right. Two Engine minutes testing. to my prediction. All right. I kind of want your prediction to be exact. I don't know, John. I don't think so. I don't think we saw all of. My them. record is two seconds. No kidding. My worst is my worst is eight minutes. So you know. What, all right. So what plus or minus. Is. Uh... <laughs> Even eight minutes is remarkably good, if you ask yeah. me. But maybe let's uh, let's, let's shut our our gab holes yeah, for a little bit do. and yeah. uh, listen in and and see if we can hear a little bit of what's going on and. Certainly, once we see it fire or do something, we won't be talking over it. But let's not, not big enough, Wookie. Let's ref try as hard as we can. Refrain from talking for a moment. That'd be cool to see, though. I agree.
<laughs> you, nice. Any countdown? Nah, it's it, it's a test regime, pros, uh, Procyon. So there's really, I mean, space. This is a NASA spaceflight cast. SpaceX doesn't tell us nor about the timing nor testing. Uh, so we can only assume that the siren. If you look at the top left, uh, the siren is about ten minutes out. So this is a big if. Um, we should be about f four minutes out, give or take. Should be. It it really depends. It should be 17 past the hour. That's what Adrian was saying. How close is the booster to the ship? They look really close. About, a f about two or three football fields apart, Greg. This is a telephoto lens. That's a good ways away, dude. Uh... He said 14 passed was his guess? I thought he said 17 passed, Flyken. Because if that's the case, this thing's gonna fire like right now. I'm gonna go over to the other side of the screen here so you guys, you guys can get a better shot. Will the launch happen? No, this is a static fire. Magic. This is in uh, Boca Chica, Texas, Procyon, yeah. The, down at the very, very, very southernmost point of Texas in the, in the United States. The border of Mexico, if they turn the camera, if they turn the camera 90 degrees to the right, you can see Mexico. There will be no fooping in this chat. Bill, I'm guessing that they're testing for acoustic vibrations with six engines, but I, I don't see the need other than that. You got any Burger King crypto yet? No. no. What does it feel like to have teleportation powers? That eh, feels pretty good, man. Easy way to get away from zombies, you know? No, Ark, Jesus. We got a pulse on the vents right there. Come on. Seventeen passed. I'm not sure why that happens, Kilpon, to be honest with you. It's something to do with the thermal chill down cycle. They might be modulating the propellants into the engines for some reason. I don't know why you would do that. Yes, it is, Geeson. left hand side of the screen between 3 and 20 booster 3 and S and 20 there will be no fooping in here dragon you do not foop
I don't, I don't know, human. There's a vent line, so... Yeah, who knows? Eighteen passed. It's gaseous oxygen. Uh, John, yeah. You'll hear the rumble when the rocket engines go off, Frosian, and you'll 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 see it. It'll be very bright, right in like that area right there. Not not here or here so much, but right there. Twenty past. Very cold. Very cold flute seal. That oxygen is so cold that it's condensing water vapor around it. That's why. That's why it condenses like that. You can tell it's con you can tell it's condensation because of the way it is. Okay. No, it 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 is cold. Very cold. Like minus two hundred probably. It, it takes a second to kind of evaporate everything, but yeah. That's the gaseous oxygen. Liquid oxygen is even colder than that. Scorp, hey man, what do you think will be the first crew launch for, for a starship? Oh, we're a little ways off from that. Five years at the very least. Hey, there it goes. That did not sound right. Yep, nope, that sounded very bad. That did not look right either. That was not a, that was not engines. That could have been just pre-burners. And that was what looked to be a pre-burner test, right? Uh, that's a little swoop. <laughs> that, the, the, for, for a little swoop, though, that was quite yeah. big. That was, yeah, a, right? I think, the largest ball of fire we've seen emanate from under <laughs> one of these vehicles that was quite something that was uh very cool so yeah that would have been a pre-burner test all right definitely yeah, not just, full ignition no, and just to be sure ignition. that, that, that yeah. looked like all of the all of the pre-burners man that was a lot of fire we haven't seen anything like that before i think they so the pre-burners are the pre-burners are basically doing everything to the rocket engine to get it to turn on except turning except except turning the key basically uh they're yeah the the, the raptor engines are using a stage combustion cycle which if you think of a stage combustion cycle this is a very 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 general analogy so just roll roll with it for a second they have pre-burners so uh, a, the way these raptor engines are set up Think of it like they have two jet engines, and both the jet engines are shooting their exhaust into a rocket engine, and then the rocket and they do that they do that to get a more complete burn of the fuel, hence pre burner, right? It, it is a little more complicated than that, but uh, they turned on the jet engines, so to speak, but they didn't turn the rocket engines on. But it looks like they turned on all the pre burners there. I'm gonna go ahead and guess here that. It's just kind of my gut feeling here. I'm pretty sure they're they're probably gonna fire all six here now. It's like disconnecting the coils. That may have been a little a, too much for people to understand, Hellfish. But yeah. 
You think any tiles fell off? They wouldn't. Pro they probably wouldn't have fallen off during a pre-burner test. I I have a feeling that they're gonna go again here. Yeah, I think they're gonna go again. I think I think I think they're gonna they're gonna repress. Um, so look yeah. a pre-burner test is not going to use that much fuel, guys. So if we see that recondenser over here, you see that turned on. Uh, that when it, when the smoke comes from over here, that means they're pumping more fuel into that thing. Uh, right now, they're probably getting it into a safe state, or guys, maybe they're gonna recycle and go right now. Uh, maybe the because this definitely has more fuel in it than than what we've seen from previous tests. So maybe they topped it enough off to, you know, do the pre burner test and a full uh, and a static fire, or they're gonna check their hot dogs and hamburgers. I mean, they, why would they, I mean, okay, the rocket engine could heat them up. Yeah, that's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I don't know. It's Texas, though. It might be barbecue, man. On a regular super heavy flight, will Starship use its sea level raptors for landing Just only? let me have it. Just let me have it. No, it'll <laughs> use all six engines immediately after SEP to minimize mm -hmm. gravity losses. Yeah. Um, from Fry Jemmy, with the first orbital launch scheduled in July, now expected to be 2022, how much of a delay for, is from regulations? How do they hold the ship down to the ground when they do engine tests? Well, to Bolts. be fair, um, right now SpaceX wouldn't. Bolts. Very big ones. Say it. Okay, you can do it today. Where's the frost line for the fuel SpaceX tank? SpaceX wouldn't be able to do it today because. Yeah. The fuel tank, the, the top of the methane tank is right where this horseshoe thing is. That's the top of the top of the methane tank. The bottom of the methane tank is like right here, which is the top of the liquid oxygen tank, and the bottom of the liquid oxygen tank is like right here. Yeah, stainless steel does. I don't know if, like, I, I don't know why this ring, only that ring, is the one that gets the coldest. It's the one that has a lot of frost on it. I, I don't know why that's happening. I'll be honest with you. I, that's strange. Uh, you'd think that the whole thing would get covered in condensation, or the whole thing would get covered in ice, but yeah. Yep, recondensers on. They're pumping. Yeah, see, they're they're gonna pump more fuel in. The big the big telltale sign that the tests are over is right at the top of the methane tank right here, and then right at the top of the liquid oxygen tank right there. There's two gigantic vent lines. If those vent lines go off, it means they're depressurizing the tanks. If they depress the tanks, yeah, the test's over. We didn't see that here, though. But that didn't happen here. This starship has pause attraction. Can't do this without pause attraction. Okay. Oh, siren again. Interesting. So it could be okay. another test here. Yeah. Momentarily. Yep. Well, we got the siren again. All right. Super chats, but on we the got another here. test coming. When we can. Yeah, just, just a point. Da -da 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 but so what does the short siren uh, mean for us? The sheriff decided to confuse us even more. Oh, okay, great. The two what, Dave? <laughs> what is a U? Check it out. Chosen one! Wee <laughs> I'm coming! It's possible, human. I, I'm not sure. I'm still learning about Starship, I guess guys. Maybe I'm seeing an old message. I might have. Uh... It's what I've been saying for a long time. There, Starship is so dramatically different from anything we've ever seen. There's nothing that's been made like this ever. <laughs> yeah, they don't. What, what does that mean? Well, they don't make them like they used to. No, they've never made them this way. The guy that designed this was either a certifiable genius or an extensic wacko. It's gonna channel Gozer the Gozerian. I'm sorry, it was applicable, all right? Uh, Vasya, they already did a pre-burner test, but they're gonna recycle. Like, a couple minutes after the pre-burners went off, they sounded the siren Correct. again, so we should, I, I... let's see. The Starship seems to be on a 10 minute count, so, uh, we should be pretty close, actually. That's... That's the thing to do here. If we were, you know, like on an airliner, but, they have like the please buckle your seatbelt. But Vasya, the, here, I'll show you it real quick just because I really don't want to skip anything. 
Let's see if we can find it. Check this out. Look at the pre-burner test. This was all six engines. Watch. That's a lot of fire. That's a lot of fire, and it's very fuel rich. See all the see all the see all the dark the dark smoke. Very fuel rich. So yeah, that was pre-burners all day. Right, Bill. Yeah, SM4. Yeah. He threw a straw. And hopefully it's much, not much hopefully it's not like that. Season, so. <laughs> what is good this time is because we have a frost Some Delta heavy vibes. Very really? Yeah. That was Delta 4 energy right there. Because that frost <laughs> thing would go. So What are the um, black fins on the sides? I see a bunch of people in chat asking about the replay. We're not What are the fins for on the sides? Those are for landing Procyon. Uh th it's not going to do it today. But Starship does this. Look at the center screen. See the wings? Think like a skydiver, right? You know, when you skydive, you put the wings back. This thing's supposed to come in on re-entry like a space shuttle. And then instead of, like, landing on a runway, right, it's going to push the forward wings down and pull the rear wings back, and the thing will flip over, and it'll land like SpaceX lands their rockets out on the, the drone ships. That's the plan, at least. If you're looking at that and going, huh, they're going to do what? <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. Believe me, I, I I still think that's that's crazy in a good way. Like that's the good kind of crazy. But damn, dude, it's it's like it's gonna do what? <laughs> it's still kind of crazy to to think that we've seen that happen a couple of times. You know? Yeah, that thing is that thing is as tall as a 15 story building. It's the size of the orange tanks that were on the space shuttles. That thing is the size of the orange tank. It's freaking huge. A space shuttle could ride on this thing's back. Well, foop shirts. <laughs> yeah, the, nope. people really latched on to the foop. You, you uh, haven't like, missed the static fire K3, but you did miss a pre-burner test. He's remain excited shirt. Sure. Yeah, I saw that one too. I like that one. I, I, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's sexy. I'm not sure why test complete is... is Typed that into the storage. Like that, guys. Sorry. I have a freaking drippy nose today. So if you're just it's the state puff marshmallow man. One yep. pre-burner test happened now, and we are waiting. Uh, looking, it's looking like yeah, Neon. I'm with you. I, some more testing. I, I'm with you. Like, I know how big this thing is. I've never seen one. Never seen it in real life. Uh, I but I, I I've seen an external tank in real life. I've seen the ET that that's at the California Science Center with Endeavor. It's it's that sized. I know how like I've seen how big something like this is. It's that thing is huge. Again, which we saw. It kind of blows my mind that it's that big and it can just come down and land, no problem. So that is at least interesting as this is not like it doesn't look like a some sort of spooling down. It's more like Oh god, all I'm thinking is an alternative history with the shuttle piggybacking on Starship now. Reusable external tank king cot. I can dream. I can dream, man. Someday. How far are you from Boca Chica? Dando, Boca Chica... From where I am to Boca Chica is probably from where you are to... Minsk? Minsk. But yeah, this is... This is LA. I love that. Not quite Moscow. But, yeah, I'm in the far right hand, top right corner, if you're looking at a map of the U.S., I'm in the top right. This is right in the center at the very bottom. It's a long way. It's probably about, I don't know, 3,000 kilometers, something like that. It's a long way away. I could drive there, though. I have the vehicles to do it. I mean, we hope. I'll probably go down there for it, Grab Shark. Yep. Later, you are hell and gone from Boca Chica. <laughs> are Dawson and Chris down in Boca? I'm. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, guys, I showed you. I showed you on Route 154 how big this country is. I always say, like, the thing's friggin'. It's a. It's a big chungus. U.S. has lot, lot of lot of distance to cover. About 2,200 miles. Hey, not bad. 
By Route 154 standards, you are four days and five breakdowns away. Hey, 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 hey! The truck only gave me two problems during that entire trip. It was a 4,000 mile trip. I had a problem with the fuel, all right? Problem with the fuel sock because it was old, and then the wheel fell off because of some crazy freak accident, okay? All right? That truck is a beast. So you try driving a 25 year old truck across the country, all right? At least the frost and you try slapping it together in a parking lot. Don't you dare talk bad about tough enough like that. Don't you, how dare you? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> that truck is awesome. <laughs> the wheel fell off. Well, the front fell off. And it was dropped from a forklift. And it did a plywood burnout. And it was a Hoonigan truck. They, what do you want? That truck's a giver. It's a beast. And has it moved since Route 154? I daily drive it. Hibbit? it? I daily dive. I, I daily drive that thing, man. What are you talking about? Yeah, of course. I haven't touched it in a couple in a week though. A couple of weeks actually. But yeah, I was dailying it when I came back. Petrol punster, finally first fiery. Yeah, so yeah, I got you. 3,500 kilometers from Newton to Boca Chica. Hey, I was pretty good in my range estimation. Not bad. Boy, I'm just hesitating. Yeah, Hillness, I got you. How many wheels have you lost? I had never thrown a wheel on the road, good laddie, ever. That's how I know that it was bullcrap, that whatever happened was a freak accident. I always check the lugs, man. Always. I have, like, nightmares about wheels falling off, and my freaking nightmare got realized on stream, nonetheless. <laughs> oh, okay, Hibbit. Yeah, it's totally, it's sticking. <laughs> I'm already, I'm already sick of it. <laughs> I like this one from uh, Aerovale from 530, uh, $5.30. Was it clipped? Oh, yeah. Uh, Starship is the diff still good? Of course it's good. Yes, it's fine. That, I was, yeah. It's a sterling, it's a sterling axle, Phil. It's from a truck. Like, not a pickup truck, like a box truck. Uh, I'm telling like you, the it, thing has an F-350 tail. It has the... It's yes. like, it's a weird truck. It's like half F-250, half F-350, which is cool. That's why I like it. You taking a week to drive across your country is less than going across mine in four hours via train. I mean, I'm not going to lie that trains are cool, Midget, but also... Shut up at any moment. Experience and freedom like that is probably something everybody should ex should do at some point. If you don't understand it, it's probably because you haven't done it. So just That's such a fun thing, drive, dude. Just across just the entire country. That's cool, is, man. Look at the data. Look at everything. Yeah, laser. That's a long way away. Twenty nine eighty one. I'm, I'm gonna have to do it sooner or later. I want to see this thing launch. You know. It's a truck built out of, it's a parts, but yeah, truck built out of spare parts. That's how I know it was just some weird catastrophic failure, Weffrel. How do you shear eight lug nuts like that? It must have been a bump in the road or a lug nut backed out from a bump in the road. Like, I've never seen a hub do that ever. Yeah, that, that, I think that pre-burner test was all six engines, and so uh, it would make sense that this next test would be a full static fire. That's yeah, overlanding could be, trips are could be in store super for it. fun, be dude. A, test. a big deal. There you go, Micro. Yeah, that's a fun trip. So, Micro, what I did, I don't know if I don't know if you've watched the stream before, dude. Uh, what I did was I bought a pickup truck sight unseen in California from Hoonigan, from my buddies over at, at Hoonigan. It's a Hoonigan's a car lifestyle brand, right? Uh, and I know them because they, they stream on Twitch. Some of them stream on Twitch, so I'm pretty good friends with them, right? Uh, and they were selling, they were, they were selling a bunch of their cars from their YouTube channel. So they had a, an F-250, a 97 F-250 with a five speed. It's a cool truck, right? So I bought that thing sight unseen. I never, I never, I never had seen it until I flown out and I streamed myself trying to fix it. Well, not trying. I did fix it. I flew out there on, and, then, and then on stream. I slapped that truck back together in Hoonigan's parking lot by raiding junkyards and getting spare parts, and then drove it across the United States 
back home to Massachusetts. I, I tried to stream as much of it as I could. The connection got a little in some places, but yeah. What's venting on the left? That's the recondenser. Yeah. Thank you guys very much for Freaking wheel fell off in Oklahoma because one of the hubs Appreciate just decided you. to disassemble itself on the road, but... Yeah, I love that everybody is so excited about this stuff that it's... There's 25, 26... Nice, Grab Shark. Yeah, there you go. The day on Friday. Yeah, right? This one, this one's super exciting. Makes me excited to see uh, eventual booster tests. Oh, man. Yeah. It was That's a red, white thunder. Awesome. I've never seen a hub do that. I saw this the other day on Bring a Trailer. Oh, a brick nose. That's a nice truck, Panda Man. They updated the list. Yeah, I, I gotcha. We're all, we're all like, hesitant yeah, maybe. To talk I'm, I'm, I'm wanna... so hesitant to talk. I'm like looking back at the super chat, <laughs> looking back at the. Uh, all right. What I don't want is to be. Yeah, Bill. Chatting. Most likely. While it's, you know, firing. Yep. Did you just call you me White Thunder? Of course. Over under on the number of tiles falling off. One time I was talking while it exploded. Ten. That wasn't mm -hmm. so great. Oh no. This thing's got a reverb. Oh, the, the, the rocket guy, sentence. pretty bad. Yeah. But I think that's the point. Oh, I guarantee yeah, you, the I don't. Oh, yeah. I mean, Rocket Guy, do you see a, a reason to test all six engines, three Vactors, three Raptors down down here? That I don't see the reason to do a test for these six engines other than really trying to trying to pop those tiles off, right? Over, Greg. <laughs> I, I, I think, I, I'm pretty dang sure this testing, the entirety of SN20's yeah, like existence so cool is based around figuring out tiles. Honestly, yeah, I just like the watching the... the over 10, game. under 100. Okay. I could watch this for hours. I I'm going to go back over here. Hours. Engage, teleportation. Speaking of watching it for hours, thanks to everybody who's stuck it out with us here. Yeah. 26,000 people still hanging out with us. Magic. Magic. How many tiles are on it? A lot. All the darker stuff is for the tiles. I mean, they have shuttle data for the tiles, so I'm sure you're right. Yep, yeah, maybe. Can you teleport to the top of the screen? Nah, I can't right now. The recondenser going on and off again. All the time. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Hey, CN, yeah, what's yeah, going on? Tend to indicate. How you doing, buddy? It's not a bad sign. It's not like How's work, man? Everything good? Tank, uh, fortune plumber becomes active when it spools down. It's just so the sunlight, that's, Quantum. That's good. Or it could be blue steel. I think I'm it really captured my right good now. side. <laughs> I want to see a magic trick and make myself disappear. About 20 minutes now after the food. <laughs> so another food potentially imminent here. Yeah. We it is the not the same. One, one look. One look, Bill. I don't think so. I think so, Adam. So, yeah. since I um, see that in chat, mm -hmm. yes, there is a pulse, but um, it seems they changed the way... How do they the keep it from taking off? Um, it's bolted down to the test stand, Justice, no with nuts and bolts that are probably about this here. big, so, like golf ball yeah. size yeah. diameter. Sadly, There's a lot of them. Really, um, a indicator for imminent test. Yeah, watching, watching that used to be such a dead rock solid way to bailing wire okay, and duct tape <laughs> it's about to launch or about to fire its engines and now you know we're still dealing with the new behaviors of a fully orbital capable ship and that is no longer one of the behaviors we are able to watch unfortunately they're still like we were saying a minute ago i could still sit here and watch them for hours they're beautiful just seeing that liquid oxygen cascade out of the vehicle like that I'm sure if NASA pays them to do it, TJ, they will. TJ, personally, I, I would hope that Starship would get operational before the ISS gets decommissioned. You know why? 
I want Starship to go and get the ISS and bring it back down, in pieces, just as it was assembled. Literally do the same thing. Put a shuttle payload bay, shuttle style payload bay in here, and uh, RMS, use the space station remote manipulator system to have Starships constantly fly and just take the whole ISS back down, and then put it in the Smithsonian. Next to Discovery, next to a shuttle that built it. We should do that. It's not super far, but it's far enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've they launched SN. And then obviously SN send up new modules, right you know. Sitting right next to it, so. Because if you're gonna go up to, uh, if you're gonna send something the, up there to get stuff down, you should send up new stuff. You should do that. But well, you're right. You get you're getting a lot of telephoto lens. They should also get Hubble Trojan. Absolutely. It makes it look like Booster Four is right next to Ship Twenty, which. I don't know Booster what the I don't right know what we'd do with the Russian ones, not, Morrison. Maybe bring them down and then far, send them off to them. Like, you know, practically yeah. touching. Ship. Why is it bringing back down when we can make a Smithsonian museum on orbit? Because that's very expensive. Prospect changed in any way, but it looks like an, a well. The tank itself look is frosty. Yeah, the tank itself got frosty. It's and not, I it's have no idea what that means, by the way. It's yeah, I'm with you. I'm with Adrian on that one. It's a significant amount. The frosty new guts. Oh, that bird better get the heck out of here. It's gonna get loud. Interesting. I mean, it could be like. Could they bring the Hubble back intact? Sure, why not? And going up the tank, right? I'd say the solar panels would be stuck open by now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that would make sense. But I it's got a grapple fixture on it. There's no reason we couldn't go up there and unbolt the solar panels. You know, it's possible if this thing could launch crew and cargo shuttle style, which it absolutely can or could. Thank you for hitting it. Everybody I agree, has. Hellfish. It should just it should be floating with dis the, floating yeah, over it, Discovery it, at the Udvar Hazy Center. Thank you. It helps out the channel. <laughs> Rocket guys like I volunteer as curator for the Orbital Smithsonian. And if you're just joining us, we're, we're pretty hesitant to do much talking because we don't want to end up talking over a test as it's ending. So you'll, you'll hear lots of we could uh, Greg. intermittent chat. It's not as bad as you might think, Havix. Wow, okay, so we've gotten up to 12k likes. Thank you, everybody, for smashing that button. 13, wow. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hokey, get to the sub to Greg. Like the channel. The firing end up killing him? Yeah, the sound, yeah. Yeah, micro. Rocket engines are loud. They're loud enough to really cause some damage at close range. I mean... Micro, like it doesn't seem like it, dude, but the, the rocket is not, it's an explosion. It, 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 they're combusting stuff and shooting it out the bottom. It, it's an explosion factory. It makes explosions down here. So when the rocket engines fire, you get an overpressure event like an explosion. Because they're shooting out so much gas so, so quickly that it pushes, it, it causes like basically a compression shock. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that will hurt a lot. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be near it. And I've been near, I've been near rocket engines that that close. Yeah, you feel it. Panicking and searching for for the link as fast as yeah. they can. <laughs> oh, I know there another is. thing that I think it'd be fine. Habits. Like, we haven't asked uh, the mod's favorite. Technical term is today. boom boom. Oh, where everybody's yep. watching from. Yeah, oh I really wanted to do that. <laughs> So, where are you watching from, chat? Sweden, England, Hungary, Germany, <laughs> Poland. Question Alaska. regarding the vacuum raptors. Do they have the full nozzle on the vacs right now? So yes. Cool we get to bring this Would there be issues firing vacuums okay. in full atmosphere, in an atmosphere with a vacuum optimized nozzle? Also, the link to the, the plush is now pinned. Hokey, you are absolutely right in thinking about that. With that being said, with the vacuum raptors, no. It does not matter what the nozzle shape is when you're making 300 bar chamber pressure. Long story short, no, it does not make a difference. They can fire vectors down here. It's not a problem. I had that same question a long time ago. I'm like, how are they? How, why are they testing with the vacuum nozzles on? 
because Raptor's a freaking beast. Yeah. When you have high chamber pressure, they can they can basically make enough they can make enough boom boom to fill the entire nozzle, even down here, which is just absurd. First thing I saw when I logged into Discord. Oh jeez, for Yeah, that well that picture doesn't make it look very good. CGX with a five dollar super chat. I mean Hokey, they are pushing three hundred bar on Raptor two right now. Like stable three hundred bar. Not Oh, the engine hit 300 bar chamber pressure for like five seconds. No, SpaceX is with Raptor with Raptor Block Two. We're talking 300 bar all the time, which is uh, that is absurd. That that that's not a thing with engines. That is not a thing. But SpaceX is making it a thing. A ask Rocket Guy how ridiculous that is. Holding and sustaining 300 bar chamber pressure is ridiculous. It's it's a super cool product. That's oh, like, yeah. uh, you guys know like top fuel dragsters, like the things that are really those really long cars that <laughs> they go like 350 miles an hour down the track, and you, the, the, you know, they have the parachutes and the huge wings and stuff, right? Raptors working in at 300 bar and staying at 300 bar would be like a, a top fuel dragster engine, which is only really designed to work for like maybe 10 to 15 seconds. And then the motor just voids itself because you're only going a quarter mile. It would be like driving across the country with one of those at full bore the entire time. That's how ridiculous this is. It's it, it is that's just a, a monument to engineering. Like if you imagine like a straight road that goes from like New York to Los Angeles, there's a straight road and you have a top fuel dragster and you you have somehow you have enough fuel to go all the way across just and just peg it all the way across the the, Again, the US. That's how ridiculous this is. Talk that much right now because there could be another static fire or pre burn. I mean, it, and SpaceX is cranking these engines so out like like hotcakes. It's, it's, it. it's I'm telling you, it is. And that's why we are. That is not. About our commentary that, right now. If you told me that we they would be doing stuff like this five years ago, I'd be like, that's same. not true. There, there's no way. 300 bar. That's ridiculous. I think my school's hybrid rocket reached 300 bar. I don't think there was much after that, though. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> are they going to combat the enormous power of raptors for orbital maneuvering? Uh, where it's all about micro RCS. So she reaction control systems. That is a crazy amount of frost on the last... 300 bar is yeah, 4,300 like PSI. Just above that yeah. barrier white ring. We're now seeing it condense yep. much more around the, uh, the area above it. Yeah, I think this might, I mean, this is some of the fullest or the fullest I think we've seen the LOX tank. It's based on frost. Alleviate. Yeah, static fire versus flight, yeah. Wait, wait, when you're approaching 300 flight, bar like that, so man, like, when you're, when you're hitting 300 bar it, it, with a rocket engine, stuff is, it's redlining. You're basically redlining the engine, the rocket engine. You're doing the equivalent of that. Uh, because in order to get 300 bar, you have to deliver a certain quantity of fuel and a certain quantity of oxidizer very fast. Rocket engines are very limited by their fuel delivery systems. It, 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 literally, if you can't deliver more fuel and oxidizer, you're not going to make as much power. Raptor has Raptor has an ace in the hole, though. The ace in the hole comes from a NASA and Department of Defense demo from the early 2000s called the Integrated Powerhead Demo. They The Integrated Powerhead Demo is, was a turbo pump prototype that was done by the U.S. government, right? to look into using a hydrostatic bearing for your turbo pumps, i.e. they use the fuel and the oxidizer to suspend the turbine machinery, meaning there's like no friction in there. There's next to no, there's next to no friction on the power heads, on the, not power heads, on the turbo pumps that are on Raptor. So they can spin insanely fast. We're, we're not talking like 20,000 RPM. We're talking like 60,000 RPM, something just, absolutely incomprehensible and because of the hydrostatic bearings from those turbo pumps that's how they're able to do this that it's it's all based off of the integrated powerhead demo and the funny thing is is that raptor and the be4 share a common lineage because the be4 uses hydrostatic turbo pumps as well yeah strange right that's kind of fast I guess 
We've never seen on, Starship pre-tanked with this much right. frost. <laughs> never awesome. seen that happen. And here. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a Starship get have this much frost in it. This is... They usually fill up a little bit of fuel. There's no need to fill this whole thing up with fuel, right? Only if, if you're going to fire for only three seconds. So we've never seen them tank this much. 60,000 solar. Six, 60,000. Not 16. 60. The Raptors are ridiculous. They're, it is a ridiculous piece of machinery. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be full strength. Duration is what I'm curious about. people rolling on them. Thank you guys very much for the support. Uh, John Plyer, laying on a beach in Ziwa, Ziwata Neho is what it is. It's a, uh, it's a Neho. Redemption reference. You are not on Ziwata oh. Neho. And that's where that's where yeah, uh, the characters go in reference. You're totally in Shawshank right. Redemption. Jack's right. So that is a Shawshank a reference. One, like, yes. It's a good one. Thank you for catching that. For the most part, Taj. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Nick Alderman asking, how was the Starship held to the test stand with a $2 shipment? I know, submitted. It's ridiculous. What's the possibility oh, that the test was an abort? No, oh, it was not an abort, to, Forge. Really no, 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 no. They, Clear they... The type, they like, devices. Yeah, no, they, it was a pre-burner test. If you're a Futurama fan, clamps! Metreon, I'm with you on that one. That's why I don't think, uh... I don't think. Um, and so on asking. It's strange that they fully so tank it. Like, what are they? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna? Just, are, are they gonna? They're just gonna go in raw and just correct, gas correct. the thing? Yep, like, both of those things are for like 15, <laughs> 20 seconds? Like, what's gonna happen here? The answer to your question is yes. Mm -hmm. Just remember, Chad. If the combustion chamber is operating at three hundred bar, the turbo pumps are operating higher at like five hundred bar. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mark with four euro twenty. Foop. Spoosh. If the limited Spoosh. rocket engines is currently propellant delivery, what would happen if they doubled up on the turbo pumps? Uh, uh, Celadon hair you'd have to make sure that the turbo pumps have a synchronizer gear, Tessa, or else you're going to run into some really bad mixture problems. Long story short, gets too complicated. And thank you very much for the support. Yeah, there's a starship fuel on the pad, so at least we got that going for us. Prevent it from lifting off? Yeah, maybe. And that lock tank is getting frostier and frostier. Fair enough. Yeah, I know, God. It's ridiculous. Ow, oh, this is... Potential aborted test new. at 41 past like the hour. Like new in a, in a static fire test. How do you mean? This much of frost and uh, this constant uh, fly frost. Mm. That's, yeah, that's maybe. not what you see with every static fire test. No, this is definitely different. I wonder if they just need more... Locks yeah, if I can, d d no off-topic stuff right now. I gotta pay attention. I missed an reason. abort test. Because uh, what we're not seeing is that amount of frost on the methane tank. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's a pretty like sharp line that kind of just yeah. stops right there where the methane tank starts, which is interesting. How do they keep I mean, the rocket from destroying the structures sure around it? They will need to reuse. Stable, right? Well, now maybe you're getting into GSC stuff, Tash. That's yeah. my domain. One. So maybe it's f just fuel. How do you more. make how do you make yeah. something yeah. that's designed to launch a rocket withstand a freaking rocket launch? It's it's Six like having an atomic two, blast okay. go off near the near the near your launch maybe pad infrastructure. Sort of that's my favorite thing to that's like the coolest thing to me. To feed six engines at the right Some pads, pressure, dude, are not are not reusable. Relax. Some rocket launch pads are refurbishable yeah, because the rocket messes them up. That's a good question, dude. There's a lot of stuff you gotta consider. Because considering there's basically a an explosion happening down there, a big one. So yeah, thirty thousand people watching right now. If you're joining us recently, so far we've seen a, a, a six-engine pre-burner test and an aborted something, uh, and we are waiting for more testing. There is about two hours left in the window, and Starship just occurred is to you. In a testing posture. Launch pad design is it no is joke, dude. Not detanking. You have to figure out a way to get the explosion out and away from the rocket real quick. <laughs> if not taking on additional locks, it's just because that tank is full. Because look at all of that frost on there. This is yeah, I, I would feel pretty confident that this is going to another test right now again. It's definitely a vehicle that wants to do some more testing. Uh, Super Steve in chat asking if is it just me or is the no nose cone bluing? I just looked at it and I, I'm not seeing it. I'm 
I think it might just be the shadow. Sometimes the I'm realizing that now that I'm learning like more reflects the sky a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let let's do some mafia. If the tag I mean, Taz, you want to know the you want to know the real thing? You 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 don't want equipment getting damaged. You don't want ground service equipment getting damaged during a rocket launch. Put as much dirt or concrete in between you and the rocket engine as you can. <laughs> That's honestly, there's no other way to do it. Put put concrete, a lot of it, between you, and even then, rocket engines are abrasive to concrete, like, like a like a sandblaster is to paint. Yeah, very abrasive. Flame trenches look like a uh, a road from a road in Michigan, believe it or not. I've I've walked up to Slick 41's flame trench before. At that's Atlas Fives. The inside of the flame trench looked like a road that hadn't been maintained in probably like 50 years, because the rocket engines will literally just rip the concrete off. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty nuts. They have to fill it with like uh, silly putty, not silly putty, but like it looks like a, a badly maintained road up in there. Any meaningful rockets turn concrete into it's glass. The weirdest yep. numbered ever to be meaningful in this test. Yeah, it looks like a Michigan well, road. We were saying before we're inside of there because they're concrete. At this point, that's why that's why it popped into yeah. my head. Totally crazy. Just think of when I have, whenever I go to see Primo's family uh, to drive on those damn roads. And our power was out, but then we got it back. And the pre-burners fired within seconds. Perfect time, timing. Thanks this road for the suck, man. It's uh, so thank bad. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you, everybody else uh, who's popping in now for watching. Ruin your boots that way, Rock Yeah. Excuse me, 30.5 thousand. That's how word numbers work. I I think so. Hashi, yeah. They could also be testing heat tile attachment while the walls contract. Every time I'm I telling look, you, man. Sure. Phil, that's probably a thing. I, I just keep on feeling like it's about to do something. <laughs> right. Come on, do something. <laughs> yeah, Taz, yeah, a little different than California roads, huh? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Stepping on molten concrete from an engine test. Yep, okay. Yeah, hammocks, yeah. <laughs> so Hill in chat says Ship 20 has a face. It kind of does. I, I've seen people say that, and I'm trying to figure out where that is, because I don't see it. Uh, it's got the chains for the upper flaps uh, mm -hmm. are the eyes. At least that's what it looks like to me. And then the the weld line between the nose cone and the nose cone barrel is the mouth. And that oh, other I, that other yeah. chain is kind of like a nose. I don't know. It's, yeah, like, yeah. it's definitely got a face. It's got a crouchy face. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're saying now. Um, and I'm just not going to be able to see that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, that makes the TPS that much more like sideburns. Now would there be no doubt there was an abort, I'm watching way closer. Yeah, yeah exactly. right. It's hard because sometimes the condensation obscures the base of the vehicle. Yeah, you got that recondenser uh, activity a little bit on that left side again. Yep, chugging away. I'm watching it eagle-eyed too. We have 31,000 watching this right now, which is awesome. We all we have a uh, 1,600 watching Starbase Live right no now. Drive, if you have the ability to have two fleets at once, don't forget about Starbase Super Live. Freak. It's got additional Super angles. Freak. Nine month reset. Thanks, to buddy. help you further analyze what the heck might be going on right now. If you have the screen real estate, it's definitely worth it. 
Yeah, I've just got my iPad here it's to the left of estate. my main screens with Starbase Live on, basically at all times. It's I'm helpful. using, I'm using every device I have. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian's like, I'm tank watching as hard as I can. Yes. Chaz MDFW with a five dollar super chat and I like big foops and I cannot lie. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is it, look at that that venting that's going upward. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, I was just about that, to point that out. Uh, that right side flat. Do you see that? A lot of DK was just like That's interesting. Uh, Alright. Huh. <laughs> Always a new vent. Always. I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah, me either. Curious. Man, I hope they didn't spring a leak. One thing we haven't seen today is the header tank frost up at all. Yeah, not at all. Uh, and we had seen that with the uh, that uh, previous. That's not uh, supposed to vent that we like that. If if, if uh, it's supposed to, it's not uh it's not right, something right, that we've seen. Right up <clears> that notes. See uh, the the aft yeah, it was some right weird venting too. starboard it was side stuff. wing. I always like seeing new things. Up there. Yeah, they look like uh, we've never seen something like that before. <laughs> I don't know if there's no, a vent no line there. Vent. Why is Starship? I think we called it the moustache vent at that yeah. evening. I reject this name. Um, I hope that's on purpose. I refuse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not detanking, Bandit. You'd know if they were detanking. Sorry, the grumpy You'd face You'd see the pressure valves open here influencing here. Me, apparently. There's two huge ones. <laughs> but imagine now They're gigantic. They're moustache. right next to the raceway. You'd see these ones uh, pop off. I haven't seen... I've never seen it vent from there and there before. It seems like the same thing Getting is happening on the other wing. See right there? Yeah, yeah that... That frost too. It looks like interesting. They're doing some kind of crazy more test more here. We've never. This is a lot of phenomenon we've never seen before. Frost on there, like we were talking about earlier. <laughs> hey, Gah. Get out for the ULA sniper. Yeah. What's that noise? Yeah, I guess they did bagel. I, I, but the, that was from the tri mm -hmm. If you heard it, we have it. It's very subtle in the in the stream right now because once the uh, static fire, potential static fire, uh, were to happen, we don't. Yeah, want that's to blow strange. Up nervous. Your speakers, right? But we just heard a siren there on, at the site. So twelve fifteen ish. They're not glued, Panta. They're mechanically bolted no on. Up. Doing a direct. <clears throat> hey, what's going on, buddy? 67 months. Shaking? Just waiting That's to awesome, see what's man. happening here. That's more fuel more than I've ever seen put in a starship. Yeah. There's fuel. Like, look at how frosty it is. Static fire, pretty please. I'll be so happy. Would, that would be awesome. No, the frosty part is the oxidizer I mean, tank, will it be Petty. Cool to see. It'll be an important step strange. in this test program. First but the methane tank, the methane tank is not frosty. I've never seen behavior like this. This is something we haven't seen before, which is cool. Hopefully we learn something new, and hopefully SpaceX does as well. Oh, God, Dodo. 32,000 people. Yeah, we're just... People yeah, Dragon, that's what I'm saying. We've never seen behavior like this before. Test, so we're, you're going to hear us talking pretty intermittently. Yeah, and I do want to reiterate, Starbase Live, just bring it up on your phone, whatever other second screen you've got. It's it's just nice to have more mm -hmm. angles. If you want them, you got them. I thought, could that be a pipe that runs from the inside of the top of the locks tank to below the tank as a gas relief for the boil off? Why not just put it at the top of the tank, Tessa? I mean, yeah, it's possible, but that seems like wasted effort. 
Yeah, real lefty. We when we when I when I turned the stream on to watch NSF's cast, it was all silver. <laughs> it was not like that. Starbase Live Snickers, yep. There was another siren a second ago, yep. <clears throat> yeah, Nighthound, I'm yeah, it's gotta be, but I just don't know what it's for. It's very strange. There's a vent right there. And it seems to be on both sides. See it right there? Hmm. Siren is about two minutes ago. Two to three minutes ago. Alright. Good update, thank you. Potential test eminent here. The fact that it stopped? What do you mean stopped, Luffy? I don't, I don't understand. Or Luffy. Excuse me. Switch back and forth. Starbase Live and uh, the main test stream. We can flip back, flip back. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good point, real, yeah. And since people ask about it, there will be replay angles later. We just don't want to show a replay over potential new action coming. I don't have permission from Lab Padre. Nervous. I've never. I've never bothered to reach out. And I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I have explicit permission from NASA Space Flight to restream this stuff. So, like, you can link to Lab Padre, and I, I support Lab Padre, I have the thing open, but I've never actually gone and asked the dude. I just, I mean, we got NSF. That's all I need. Lewis is a particular sort of man. Yeah. It, you know, it's Adam, it's not that I've never... Like, it's not that I've asked and he said no or anything. I just I just haven't asked. I mean, I'm sure he'd... I'm sure it'd be kind of... Like, well, I don't know. I don't know if he'd be cool with it. I don't think he knows what Twitch is. But he might. Who knows? You never know. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to ask. The worst he can say is no, in which case we just keep showing this, you know. Why did they do testing so, so close to fuel storage unless that's an illusion? It's just an illusion. They're about a football field away from each other, Sile. This is just, a, it's a telephoto lens on this camera and we're a long way away. Today's the 40th anniversary of the launch of the STS-2. Cool. It's like seven minutes since the siren, something like that, right? A little while ago. About there. that, yeah. We should be looking at something happening any second here. There is a banana on here, but it's so small you can't see it flanking. Did you hear about Glenn DeVry? No, Hillness. He was on New Shepard, wasn't he? What happened? <clears throat> Dodo's right there. Yeah, there you go. And we got some hand bananas in chat. He died in a Cessna crash yesterday. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> I 
What is the temperature difference in this video? Rephrase that. Ask again. I'm not sure what you're asking about. About 350, yep. Oh, man. <laughs> My browser just... Oh! oh! Oh yeah, some tiles fell off. There you have it, that was a static fire. Wow. Yep, that was thrust. Wow. Love hearing it. My browser decided to take that moment to reload YouTube, so I saw a bright white flash on one oh. window, and then looked over at my other window, <laughs> and saw it happening. Way to go. But that looked like it's always only the first impression, but that looked damn. Good that was crazy. Definitely lost some tiles, though. Sounded awesome. Did you see awesome. that? <laughs> what a shape. freaking beast! Yes. Great. Yeah, that was definitely the Tessa. I think that was definitely all all of them. How many <laughs> engines? Uh, uh -huh. Also, uh, that was all of the thrust. Did you see? Uh, did you see that? Did you? You can. Okay. All right. Look. How do I know? How do I know that that was all the engines? Okay. Well, first of all, they tested all the pre burners. Second of all, you know it was all the engines because of a sudden upward force hitting it was enough to jolt Starship that the ice kind of came off the sides. If you go back and watch that replay footage, the, here. Uh, you know what? I'll just show you. Look. Watch. Telltale sign of a very very quick acceleration here. Watch the watch the ice. The ice kind of just shatters off. That tells me that there's a lot of thrust under there, and it bonked the bottom. See all the ice coming off the side? That was all the engines. They fired all the things. They fired all of the things. That's the hatch, I think, Vasya. Yeah. Here, let's let's listen to it again. I want to see if we can listen. Oh man, <laughs> my browser just. Hmm. That sounds, Tess. I think you're right. That sounds like a sequenced ignition. So. One, two, three vectors, or what? One, two, three raptors, one, two, three vectors. That's what that sounds like. But once again, I could be pulling that out of my tail. Imagine. Yeah, the tiles popped off. But the other thing to notice is that. Static fire. So. I mean, the maybe. first time, first time they've ever done that, probably, yeah. maybe. <laughs> we, I, I wouldn't go as far as confirming it. Here. So watch. You do see some tiles pop off, guys. But the other way, the other the other reason that I know that this was all the engines is because what you start to see is a vacuum effect. All the ice and the and the tiles that pop off from the sides of the booster, you can you can already see from all the engines firing, it's pushing a lot of air and a lot of gas down. You can start to see a vacuum going on. It'll start it's starting to suck things down. That's how that's how you know. That's really indicative of a lot of thrust. Watch. Did you see it start to pull those gases down? Watch it one more time. Here, I'll, I'll put it in slow-mo. Vacuum sucks. Okay. Watch, like, right here. See? It shatters, the, uh, it shatters frost off of the vehicle, and then the gas starts to get pulled down, and then it stops. Oh yeah, yeah. That, I'm pretty sure that that was all of them, and it looked really clean. A couple of tiles did fall off. Discovery, go at throttle up. Lab Padre shows the other side, dude. Yeah, that didn't lose as many tiles as I thought.
Here, I'll pop this guy's back over to live here. It's just a let's just see a five second clip here. Yeah. Oh wow. That's why you guys say it said go check out Lab Padre. Holy crap, man. Dejong, what's up, buddy? Wow. That's crazy. Elon tweet. Good static fire with all six engines. How was he able to get such a close shot? It's probably it's probably not close. It's probably another telephoto lens flaking. Yeah, they lost some tiles, but it wasn't wasn't too bad. Did I miss the static fire? Yeah, by about two or three minutes. Here, I'll show it to you again. It looked good. He has a truck oh, parked on the beach with a remote camera. Nice. <laughs> My browser just... Get it for your dog, get it for your kids, get it for yourself. But either way, get it now because it's extremely limited quantities. So uh, we might be ordering more if they sell the well, beach. but this first batch. Nice truck. And it, it, you know, there's a little bit of a lead time to get them to us. So you know, if you want, if you want a Starship plushie, get one now or forever hold your breath. Yeah, there is a pretty limited amount. I haven't seen them vent down, guys. I've been, Dodo, I've been watching it. Surprisingly uh, clean purge at the end. Gimbal? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, manual, manual gimbal on the uh, flushy engines. <laughs> Let me see it one more time, Rocket. I'm going to turn the sound up. Oh, man. <laughs> My browser just. sounds real good man that sounds real those engines sound real healthy rock right, guy that that yeah there you have it that those was things, a static fire there you go yeah those things sound real healthy yeah you're right purge down was real dude that, it, that sounds real good man oh man his browser just they fired sea level engines and then the vacuum engines yeah sequenced ignition you don't want to fire all the engines at the same time guys you could you could sh compression shock load the uh, the rocket and rip it to shreds. You you do a sequence ignition. So you you fire one two three, and then four five six. Uh, don't go. You go around the horn like that. Uh, you can get a lot of resonant vibrations if you try to fire all the engines at the same time. And then also, you're basically booping the bottom of the of a fuel tank with the thrust structure. If you do that, you don't want to do that. Bad idea. Uh, that does not end well. Um, they figured that one out a long time ago. Uh, so it looks like they, they fired sea level and then vectors right after that. Like torquing lug nuts, pretty much. Yeah, El Desert. Yeah, exactly. Three distinct ignitions. Lit them in pairs. It's possible. I got very excited. But like it's gonna, this is gonna sound weird describing this, but you can tell the engines are healthy because th from the sound because of the noise that they're making. The noise is very consistent. It's it's on and then it's not. It's a very consistent noise. That's how you tell a rocket engine is nice and healthy. It's just a, the noise is very consistent. Meaning that nothing is changing. They turn the engine on, and it's on, and it's staying on. You can always tell by the sound if, if it's healthy or not. It's just like a car engine, which is strange. Because car engines do that too. You'll know when a car engine has a problem. And you'll know when a car engine is 
is healthy because it'll just the, the operation will be very smooth how's the sound again just like that yeah welding as well yeah sound like sound like sizzling bacon if it doesn't sound like sizzling bacon then you didn't do it right Apollo and Zeus are under starship cool full thrust yeah, yeah which they likely yeah, did do you have an audio example of an unhealthy rocket engine? I'm sure I I'm sure we've I'm sure I could find something somewhere. Did you see the new paint job? Yeah, I did, Voxy. Yep, yep. Uh y you know what? Here, hold on. I, I think I might have one. So let's... I just want to show this quick because I don't want Twitch to thumbnail this. I don't want Twitch to thumbnail this and, you know, people see the Starship test on the main screen. Uh, this isn't... Uh, the SN9 test. SN9's engines were not healthy because they had they had nitrogen ingestion in one of the engines. Uh, like I'm not, I'm not sure if the sound shows up here, but like I know that this is an unhealthy and sound. Transition to one engine for the landing burn. Did you hear it? The that kind of petering off. That yeah, that's that's the sound. Yeah. It sound you're hearing this, but then you're hearing the other engine do that. You hear the sputtering? Listen again. That at the very end, right before you hear the <laughs> you know <laughs> that's the that's yeah that's not good <laughs> that's the noise it shouldn't be making <laughs> yep <coughs> you hear the difference <laughs> that's not what you want to hear you you don't want to hear that sputtering or a change in the pitch that's yeah that's bad <laughs> that means that means it's not doing something that you wanted it to or it's doing something you didn't want it to do excuse me i made a video without the sound delay oh neat cool yeah k3 the static fire yeah here i'll show you it sounded real good real healthy here my browser just take a look this is a replay Oh man, <laughs> my browser just. You hear the pitch? There's no pitch change there. That was real. Those those engines are real healthy. My, I have it though. My browser just. <laughs> that dang old browser. Jack's never gonna hear the end of that, is he? <laughs> oh man, his browser just. <laughs> oh man <laughs> my browser just <laughs> yeah I heard about you that have it. that was a static fire there you go yep that was thrust Alright, that was a replay of the static fire. But guys, Austin Barrick. I haven't seen any chill down here. Guys very much, I think. So we might be going again here. Goodness. So many super chats, guys. Thank you very much. His browser. Who's he? Rumor has it his browser never came back. Jack's browser just went out to get a pack of smokes and it never came home. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh man, my browser just... I'd have to ask Jack if I could make that an alert. <laughs> I'd, I'd ask to use his likeness before I go and do it. Check this puzz. Check this puzz. What's this? Yeah, Lab Padre had, a qu had quite a good view. I think I already have that up here. So this is, I don't want to play too much of Lab Padre, because once again, I don't have permission to show this stuff, guys. You want to go see the full thing of this, go watch Lab Padre's stream. That showed really good ignition, though. Yeah, see see how the see how the flame the, the the smoke that's coming out see how it's staggered so one two and then three the engine at the back there's your sequenced ignition and then four five six yep definitely a sequenced ignition sea level first vector second Oh yeah. My browser just Yep, three center, three outer sequence ignition. I mean that's once again, that's that's kind of industry standard. Everybody does that. So what I'm doing is good enough right now. So I, I don't, um, I'm good, thanks. Awesome. What are shock diamonds? Yeah. Shock diamonds are the shark. Shock diamonds are what happens with rocket engines when the. Uh, <clears throat> it's a phenomenon that happens when your ambient pressure is high. So when you're closer to sea level, basically because of the underexpanded plume that's coming out of a sea level nozzle. The plume kind of goes out, and then atmospheric pressure causes it to come back down and collapse in on itself. And where it kind of, where the the edges of the plume come back and hit each other, it, it makes like this weird flow phenomenon called a shock cone. It looks like a cone that kind of hitting each other. Here, it's really easy to see with a. Uh, 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 here, let's try this. This is a. Uh, here, let's go over here. See that? The the plume is coming out of the rocket engine, and then it's it, the pressure is the air pressure is pushing it back in on itself, and the plume pushing back in on itself is what creates that that phenomenon there. Don't jet engines kind of do that? Jet engines do do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Raptor shows better shock diamonds. I disagree. I disagree wholeheartedly. He said doo doo. I spaced it out and everything, Panto. What the frick, man? Ugh. Awesome. Oh, I love the force, like I, I love the force behind it. Mm -hmm. Sound force. is really powerful. Discovery. Mm -hmm. Discovery. Aaron, what's up? Yeah, it's it just sounds awesome. Been busy, but you always try to pop in when you can. I always enjoy the streams. Keep up the awesome job. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Seven month reset. Just raw power. Yeah. It's just raw power. Just raw energy. Shake your bike. Could say it a thousand times, man. It'd still be good. <coughs> PC specs are down there, Kazips. Goodness. Uh, well, Senti coming in with one dollar. Yeah, what rocket guy said, and fellas? The tuba man saying, uh, could the, the missing <sighs> tiles on. just be from the shockwaves bouncing off the ground? That's um, so, like, the idea being that... Oh, there we go. Scrubbing through that footage. That, uh... 
because it's tethered to the ground, that's why it's actually missing those tiles just from that shockwave. Yeah, I think Elon even tweeted something to the effect of, uh, "This the it's this the situation for the tiles is worse during a static fire than actually in flight." Something along those lines, and that's that could be part of it. That's why they're doing this. At this moment, his browser knew. <laughs> It was at this moment, he, his browser knew he screwed up. Did I miss the static fire? Vent stack still venting. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna need bigger bolts but for the still tiles. very frosty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like the frost started to go away and then it might have even started up again. Maybe that's yeah. just a function of emptying the tank out. Could be. Remember, left side is a replay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen them chill down the tanks, Maverick. We might see them go again. Would a landing burn be rough on tiles? Uh... Yeah. So cool. Well, actually, you know what? Probably wouldn't be as rough as you might think if Mechazilla is going to catch this thing. Because then you're not, you're not obviously not near the ground, right? Like, if I'm thinking about this right, where Mechazilla would catch the catch starship is high up in the air, like 300 feet up. And if that's the case, that yeah, you might not. It looks like they might be going again, Swishio. The road closure ends in an hour, hour and a half. Delightful. No, it's three. Yeah, an hour and a half. We got an hour and 25 uh, minutes left in the window. Plays games is saying thanks for the coverage, guys. Hey, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the support. Yeah, so that area that was losing frost. So where Which are the dog houses? It might be craw. <laughs> They're over over <laughs> on the other <laughs> side of Pat A. The catching starship are super heavy. Yes. That's still it's uh, the tentative plan right now, Neo, and keep in mind, always subject to change. I don't think SpaceX has the final answer on this one. We know they're gonna catch super heavy. That's the plan. But the meme lord himself has said that they're going to try to catch Starship as well, which is... Okay. I still wonder why they filled it up so much. Like, it's that's still... Fair. It's it's sort of interesting. But I don't know. Never, I don't know how that's no going to work. No way they used all of that. How are you going to catch that thing? No, no way. With yeah. tiles right. on that's, it. That's a good question, because they... Uh, but then again, it is SpaceX, so... I mean, they don't knows? do that normally for a static fire. Maybe it's... Another test. I yeah, Subcom. To That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Should have both of those things. Or maybe it was necessary for firing six engines. <sighs> Lifting catch points are on the ships already. Jukes with a uh, $2 Canadian super chat. Stay frosty, my friends. <laughs> Stay frosty. Guys, I'm going to get more coffee. I'll be right back. Okay? Play of the pre burner coming up here. Okay, great. Yeah. I think we're between we did not tests. Not get a replay of the play. Uh, excuse me, a replay of the pre burner previously, because we were waiting for oh, the static fire. Cool. Look at that. That's so cool. I almost like that more than the static fire. Yeah, to be honest. Well, the static fire, you end up seeing a lot of dust. And I've always wondered what like some of the other workers, uh, how they feel about having just all that dirt and dust kicked up onto whatever they were working on. I mean, definitely a huge number of them have, like, face coverings. So at the very mm -hmm. least, they don't have to be breathing it. But yeah, all the surfaces out there are just dust riddled. Yeah. I love how the fire sort of consumes the locks coming out of those vents briefly. Right. Yeah. As the fireball expands. It's so cool. Very it has a very... Picture. Oh yeah, we did get a really cool picture from Mary. Hold on one second. It has a that very was... hopper-esque feeling yeah, it. yeah right agreed look at that what a great photo love it 
Oh my god, yes. Someone needs to Photoshop, like, the this is fine dog in there somewhere. <laughs> like, this is fine. <laughs> oh, man, right? So that is a photo oh, from Mary, at Boca Chica Gal, on Twitter. Um, I'll bet that she has already tweeted something. Yeah, look at that. Ruby. Look at that yeah. reflection on Booster 3. The red, the reflection of yeah. the red. What a great photo. I love it. You can even see the reflection in ship itself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, now don't recreate that with the Starship plushie. This you, you will <laughs> set your plushie on fire. It is not made of stainless steel. It's not a steely, it's a plushie. And the link for that is, a, in, is pinned in chat, the top of chat. If you haven't got it yet, get it now. They're going to go fast. So for anybody who wants to take a look a little bit closer at some of the replays and whatnot that we had, uh, make sure that you check out this evening's daily video. We publish videos every single day about all the happenings over there at Boca Chica uh, with Mary and Nick taking photos and videos for us. And we will have all sorts of angles, all sorts of uh, uh, slow-mo replays and whatnot upcoming in the video tonight. Yeah, we, I don't know what the plan is quite yet, but we might even do, uh, I don't know if, uh, we might do a static fire video real quick and, and get that yeah. done and out. Um, we might do a static fire video and a daily video. So either way, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and there will be fantastic multi-angle replays of this event. Did he crash it? A video coming to a YouTube near you. Yeah, speaking of subscribing, we are very close to a milestone of half a million. Oh, very, very close. Just 6,000 away. YouTube. I, I, mean, I can't imagine that anybody watching right now isn't subscribed. But if you are, hit that subscribe button and then you'll be able to catch up, care, keep up with all the happenings that are going on. Uh, we should have mentioned that when we, were at, when we were at 30k people uh, watching. Yep. That would have been yeah. a good idea. <laughs> they showed an amazing shot from Boca Chica Gal. Oh. having just all that dirt and dust kicked up onto whatever they were working on. I mean, definitely a huge number of them have, like, face coverings. So at the very least, they don't have to be breathing it. But yeah, all the surfaces out there are just dust riddled. Yeah. I love how the fire sort of consumes the locks coming out of those vents briefly right. yeah. as the fireball expands. It's so cool. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to go up to, the, to where my browser just... And Tessa, we'll give this thing a shake down here. Let's see. Mmm. I just burnt my tongue. We still haven't seen them chill down Starship, which is uh, interesting. You got a feeling his testing is done as the tanks, the test tanks are lining back up at the roadblock to head out to the launch site. Well, they haven't, they haven't chilled down Starship yet, from what I've seen, though, or ch not chilled down, vented it. The frost does appear to be receding, yeah. <clears throat> That's right, Thorn.
Oh, that was one of the first things that they put there, Bandit. They have a ground tracking station at Boca Chica. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, Glenda Ride passed away. Zyze up, I know. Oh. As if I wasn't coughing enough, some water went down the wrong pipe. That happens, unfortunately, when you stream sometimes you forget how to drink water correctly because you're, talk you're talking all the time. Oh. <clears throat> NSF has this marked as detanking. New to the stream. The chat has predictably latched on to fish state. New to the stream. Are they testing or launching today? So Matrix, they did a static fire today. And if you're not familiar with that, static fires are basically tests. Uh, no launching involved. They do everything <clears throat> everything up until up up to launching it, except let the thing go off the pad. So they fire up the engines just for a second. And they let them they let the engines run for a moment and then shut everything off and obviously don't release it. So here, I'm trying to find the replay for you. Here, you know what? We can use Lab Padres for this. Here, take a look. So this is what happened. This is what happened today. We're, you're on the tail end of the test, but here. Um, take a look. 